Hey everybody, Andy here. Thanks for joining me today. Got a special one on interviewing, particularly how to introduce yourself. We got a couple of great guests with us. And this is, we're kicking off a three banger, three days in a row, all interviewing. Today, we're going to talk about how to introduce yourself. Tomorrow, we're coming back with story selection. How do you pick the right stories to tell in an interview? And then on Thursday, we're capping it off with, I'm going to hit stories. I'm going to hit the 11 groupings of question types, the different formats. I'm going to give you a formula for how to answer your interview questions. And I've got a great case study for you as well. So buckle up, get in the chat, say hi. Let me know you're here with me. I see the chat's been rolling this morning. And uh, Stefan, David Gerton, way to go. Come and see me today. Adam Stark from the other side of the pond. Dave Colburn, Mike Tierney, oh, Barry, Gary, Atunga, Elias, and everybody else from all around the world. Great to have you. Uh, so, so just so you understand the format for the next three days, I'm going to teach. Uh, we're going to do some Q&A. Uh, that's going to be, these are all going to be public shows. I'm going to leave them on my YouTube channel because I know you're going to ask me, are the replays going to be available? They will. You can watch them forever and ever. And then after the public shows, uh, I have kind of VIP sessions, private group coaching sessions with member of my job, members of my job search coaching program. That program's actually on special for $500 off right now. Uh, if you want to jump in and join us every day, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday this week. All right. So what's today all about? We're going to talk about introducing yourself. And I know this can be one of the more tricky problems. Now, if you have followed me for a while, you know I'm a big proponent of having a bite-sized, uh, one-sentence descriptor of yourself, one-sentence elevator pitch, the real snappy and punchy, super fast things you can use at networking events, things just a way to say, hello, I'm kind of thing, so headlines on your LinkedIn profile. And then you've got the other side of the coin where employers want you to, or somebody wants you to talk about yourself, and they ask you to what? Walk me through your resume, tell me about yourself. Those responses that can get quite lengthy, not to mention complicated. But there's something in between where you score major, major points by bringing out the most important elements of you as it relates to someone else. So introducing yourself is actually not really about you, as weird as that sounds. It's about, to do it effectively that is, you certainly can talk about yourself if you want, I just don't think it flies over well. But when you wanna make an impact on a company, it's about highlighting the things about you that match what it is they need, right, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a job candidate, in an employee, future employee, but also you're doing it so that you're making an impression, building rapport, and you're leaving them the breadcrumbs you want them to hang on to because you're about to say a bunch of stuff about yourself. It's really hard for people to remember, right? And it, it's not that people have bad memories. It's a combination of them not being focused, them not being attentive, them being distracted by all the other work they're doing, right? Their deadlines, their customers, their bosses. And so it's very difficult to capture and keep someone's attention, and you definitely want to do it at the beginning. So what I've done... Actually, last month in May, I don't know when you're watching this recording, but in May, I decided to have a session with members of my job search coaching program, we call them the boot campers, where I thought, you know, I was getting this question so much about in my one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with some of these members, where they were saying it's really hard for me to figure out what to say up front. So... I never really thought about it, right? I just, it was natural to me of what to communicate. So I sat down, I reverse engineered a formula, I gave it to them, and then what I did was I taught them the, the, the structure, and then we did a bunch of hot seats where I said, okay, give me your resume right in the session. We pulled you up on camera, and I said, okay, I'm going to blitz through your resume. I'm going to tell you what I see, right? Just feedback what's registering, and then if I were you, how would I actually introduce you? We're gonna do that today for you guys. I thought it's just such a great lesson to be sharing with the public and I want everybody to be able to make sure that they can introduce themselves. So here's the reverse engineered formula. It's gonna sound really awkward as we go through it because it's really weird because we're breaking it up into, into the messages that you want to say. All right, let's do it. Who's with me? Who's with me? Who is pumped for this? Before I start flashing cards, 
Can you guys tell me how excited are you? Let me see it in the chat. And as a matter of fact, go in the chat and do me a favor and tell me what the, your biggest struggle is in introducing yourself. Let's see if I if I address it today. Okay, number one, I got note cards today. We got some resumes too. All right, I'm A. I'm a what? Now, you can put whatever you want in here, but I would argue that all of us have a verb-noun combo or a noun-verb combo that actually describes us. I'm Andy. I coach people, right? I'm a career coach. I'm a whatever. It could be a function. I'm a marketing executive. I'm corporate counsel. I'm the head, head legal capo de capo of whatever. I'm the chief marketing officer. I'm a chief marketing officer. Whatever you want to say, but it's got to be something that makes me remember, oh, that's what you do. It's not necessarily what you're called. Remember, this is an intro. It's about, it's about who you are. All right, that's the first thing. So that's not, that's not too tough. All right, well, you know, you know why I always like to start with the warm-ups. All right, the second part that you got to get out is... Why do you even matter? What do you transform? This is about the who the who you are and what is it that you do that makes this world a better place? So while I'm a career coach, I help people find jobs. I help people find jobs and thrive in them. I help people find jobs and get paid what they deserve. Something like that, right? So I'm a whatever who helps or builds or develops or whatever people, companies, communities, but there is some entity that benefits from your existence. It makes no difference what you do. Now, what we're going to do, now we're in step two, and you might be thinking, well, Andy, hang on, you're going to give me a bunch of cards. I got to remember all this stuff. Don't you worry. This is an Andy talk. I have a slide for you, and I'm going to give you all the quick intro short sentences for you to fill in. And if you're already a member of my job search coaching program, I have a whole booklet for you with the sentences and the samples and the things of that of that nature. So this is about getting to the heart of what you do and who benefits as a result. And so so this is this is the second piece you wanna you wanna get in there. Whatever it is that you do, I help companies grow their revenue. I help organizations increase their market awareness, that kind of stuff. But there is some simple benefit. You don't need to be throwing numbers at them just yet. Okay, who's tracking with me so far? Right? I haven't lost anybody. I know this is this is all pretty simple. Third thing is you wanna give context how long you've been doing it, how long you've been at this, something of that nature, but Okay, so how, how long or what do you want to draw their attention to in terms of order of magnitude? How senior are you? How junior are you, right? I've spent the last nine years, four years, I've spent my entire career, right? Some of us have been working over 30 years. I might say I spent my entire career, something like that. Doing what? Working as a consultant, accountant, sales engineer, helping, whatever, right? So something of that nature, you want to give them an order of magnitude of what it is that you've done. I've spent the last seven years coaching and training people on how to find jobs they love kind of thing. So you're wrapping together some type of context. That's the third component. And then the fourth component is, all right, well, what actually happened? What actually happened? So you told me what you intend to happen. And during that time, during that time, what? I've helped more than 50,000 customers. Boom. I've helped millions of people get better at interviewing. I've helped my organization sell millions of dollars of right i've 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 worked for a marketing agency and i've helped my clients attain an average increase of x percent in brand awareness because of me kind of thing right so i've made this world a better place and now i'm giving you some context now let me pause here for a second a lot of you i know cuz you follow me faithfully and i just love that uh, you you've gone to the andy lasavita school of resume writing so now we're not through with the intro yet, but what does this sound like?
Does this sound like the career profile, the career summary that you put at the top of your resume? Now, it's not exactly the career profile, but it has a lot of the same elements. And wouldn't it stand to reason that that's the first thing you want them to see when they when they get your when they get your resume? And so you you definitely want to get some kind of impact. Now remember, this is an intro. You're not trying. You don't want to eat. The, you're not eating the whole elephant in one bite. You don't have to tell them your life story in one minute, right? But you want to insert some type of high level benefit. I, as a consultant, I've helped more than two hundred companies streamline their business processes and systems. I might have said that when I was a consultant, an IT consultant, something like that. It's a huge roll up. It's just for context. All I'm saying in my introduction is I've helped a lot of people. Or I've helped, you know, I helped 150 people with that. I've helped over 200 companies recruit if I was going to go that route in my intro kind of thing. All right. So who's 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 tracking with me? Let me see a couple of these um, a couple of these struggles. Kara is sending me some struggles to introduce you. Cisco Maldonado. I love that name and I love that guy. Uh, establishing quick rapport. Ian, uh, the big big struggle is cutting out the things I care about to sharpen the message. Okay, now remember, this is a great point because now remember, you saw, you saw these four things, right? I'm a whatever, who helps, this and that, right? I've spent a bunch of time and, and here's what's happened as a result of the time I spent. Now remember, you're not, you don't win the interview in the first minute. You're just trying to get them open, welcoming, and excited about who you are. You have plenty of time, Ian, to insert insert uh, what it is that you've accomplished throughout the interview. Aylin, stating my accomplishments, I cringe whenever I feel boastful, and I definitely don't exaggerate my accomplishments. It's just that a few are difficult to believe. So we make them believable. All right, let's keep let's keep uh, let's keep working toward this. Oh. All right, now, what's one of the biggest things you got to accomplish in the interview? Right, show of hands, show of hands. What's one of the biggest things you got to accomplish in the interview? And Ian was sort of getting there with things I care about, but the things you should care about in an interview are not what you've accomplished. The things you should care about is how do I connect the skills that I have with what they need. So what absolutely needs to be in the intro? My primary focus is implementing large-scale IT solutions. My primary focus is implementing CRM IT solutions for large healthcare companies. My primary focus is digital marketing for small to medium businesses in the whatever space. Now, your primary focus can be my primary specialty, my primary expertise, my expertise, my whatever, and it could be depending on what it is you need to highlight. Now, let me, let's, let's, let's talk about this one here for a minute. It could be the solution line, it could be the industry, or it could be your function or your market or whatever. So it could be, I want to highlight um, my technical experience in a particular industry because I know that I have IT experience for healthcare and this is a healthcare company, but I might have IT experience in healthcare and I'm interviewing with a financial services company. In that case, you wanna, you wanna harp on, my primary of area of expertise is, IT solutions for large scale, blah, blah, with lots of data, lots of customers, lots of whatever. Doesn't really matter what industry it is. So you downplay that. So you wanna make the adjustment because the introduction is what? I'm sure I'm gonna say this a half a dozen times. It's not about you. It's about telling someone what they need to know about you. And it's knowing them and knowing their problems. And so the more the more in, in tune you are with the problems they face, the better you'll be able to not only introduce yourself, but then in the next couple of days, I'm going to talk to you about how do you marry up the stories that match their problems. But it's the same and it all starts with the, with the intro. Okay, that's, that's step five. And then step six is you want to make sure that you pull in 
a reference to your resume. So as you can see from my resume, I've, and then whatever your best grouping is, and let me give you an idea of what I mean by grouping. Again, looking at their job description, looking at some other things, we're gonna go deep on this tomorrow, but looking at the job description and recognizing what that organization does, what is it likely that they need the most? And what do you want to highlight that's on your resume in one sentence? Okay, you're not gonna walk them through the resume yet. You're warming them up, right? So as you can see from my resume, I've generally worked for startups, so I know the types of issues you face. As you can see from my resume, I'm currently working at Google. As you can see from my resume, I've generally worked worked at large blue chip international organizations so your large scale initiatives are very I'm very in tune with those I'm familiar with the types of challenges they present that's a best grouping okay so whatever now for every single one of you if I met with every single one of you I would have a different way of articulating this reference to my resume whatever sells you the best so you're gonna say well should I say this or that I don't know, today you might say this, and tomorrow or next week at a different interview, you might say that. So you don't turn this thing off. I'm gonna give you the sentence structure, but don't turn your brain off. It's all about matching, okay? And then the last thing, and I also have a degree from Harvard in economics. I also have a whatever. I've also worked for other companies where I've held various accounting positions. I also am multilingual, bilingual. I speak seven languages. I also have all the PMP uh, or PMI certifications and only six other people in the world have those. Whatever you wanna call their attention to, it's the last thing you're gonna say, okay? So, are we tracking? That's how you introduce yourself. Now, I spent 17 minutes explaining how you're gonna do something in, how long do you think it will take you to do that? Go in the chat, give me a number. That's the number of minutes that I want you to take a guess that you should be spending doing this. Now, obviously, that sounds disjointed, but how long do you think that'll take? I, I, this I can't wait for, this I can't wait to see. Oh, I love some of these. Oh, mine. Oh, my. Wait, let's, uh, give me what, what do you think? One minute. Oh, look at you guys. One minute. Who thinks one minute? Adrian, Ernie, three minutes. Schnell, two to three. Suzanne, one. Jay, two. Okay. All right. You guys got this. That's right. Joshua Kirby, eight minutes. No. Come on, man. I taught you better than that. All right. Wait, that's great. About one minute about one minute, okay? So let's take a look at, I, wa I want you guys to check this out. I gave, uh, I gave the boot campers a kind of a full blown booklet on this. And, um, but here, so this is, this is basically what I just gave you so you can kind of see it clean. So I'm a, whatever I am, I'm a career coach who helps people find jobs and thrive in them. I've spent the last seven years, right, building uh, a, an, an executive a leadership a coaching uh, and career coaching business that has over 50,000 uh, students, paying students from 179 countries or something like that, right? During that time, what have I done? And my primary focus is and as you can see from my resume, and the other thing you need to know about me is. Okay, so who's, who's tracking? That's about, I would say that's about a minute. If, and now remember, you're, you're gonna know you. You're gonna streamline what you're gonna say in order to open it up. And the usage of this, the usage of this is when you're going to say hello, when they say, tell me about yourself. This can be the opener that gives them an outline of areas that they might wanna dig deeper in. So there's a lot of ways to play it, right? You can say, hey, uh, I'd love to, to share 
me with you? Is there anything about my background you'd love to know? Or you could dive into this, spend a minute, explain this, and then actually go from there. And then say, and I'd be happy to expand on any other details of my background that you'd love to know. But this way, what you're doing, my way of starting your intro this way, is you could go into the interview, you know, shake hands, high five, fist bump, or elbow bump, or whatever the heck we're doing these days, and and then say, hey, you know, my name my name's Tom. Great to meet you. They say, hey, Tom, this is great. Tell me a little about you. You can just spend a minute and do what I said there, and then pause and say. You know, that's it in a nutshell. Uh, I'd love to tell you more, and I'd love to be able to kind of shine a light on areas of my background that would help you to know if I'm a great fit for the organization. Is there anything in particular you'd like me to spend more time on? Or something like that. You can you can go that route. But it's a way of getting out and, and laying down all the breadcrumbs. Now, here's what I want to do. This is the part I'm most excited about, by the way. I almost wanted to rush through the talk because I want to talk to these two. Uh, I solicited uh, volunteers... Uh, brave souls from my job search coaching program. We call them the boot campers. So it used to be called the job search boot camp. And I asked them if any of them wanted to get with me uh, today at the public live show and kind of be be hot seaters for us. You know, kind of come up and uh, you know give me your resume. I have not looked at their resumes other than to pull them up and frame them into the the screen share I'm going to show you. Uh, the team picked out the individuals from a host of, of volunteers. And then what we're going to do is we're going to spend some time with them here. Uh, Flavia, whose birthday was yesterday, make sure you give her a happy birthday when she comes up, and O'Neill. And I'm going to do that in the, in, the, in the public setting here. And then we're going to go into a Q&A for a while. And then after this, we're going to continue with more of these uh, in, in the private group coaching session that we and we've been doing these for the last three or four months or so. They've been a lot of fun. All right, so first thing I want to do is I have to I have to change some settings here to make sure that I have everything that I need where I need it. And Flavia, let me let me just make sure. Give us a second, folks. I have to change some audio settings and other things here to make sure that uh, nothing nothing uh, uh, burps at us. And I just want to get ready for her here. Hold on one second. The input is good. Uh, oh, change the input on me. Hold on. Okay, that should be okay. And the output should be good. Okay, Flavia, are you are you here with me? Want to say yeah. hello? Yeah. Let's uh, let's add you up on the screen with me. Hello, everybody. Let me make sure I can hear you. Give me a sound check. Everybody can hear me. I can hear you. Okay, there's a little echo, but that's that's okay. This should be should be no no problem. Okay, can we all give her a huge shout out? And uh, team, I want to let you know I can't see you because I'm flying blind here because my screen's got so many screens up. And I had I just pulled up her her uh, her resume, and I want to uh, give Flavia a chance just to say hello and give you just a tiny bit of information about her because I'm going to go through her resume and then I'm going to introduce her. Uh, and hopefully I, I don't uh, I don't flub this all up. So you want to say hello, Flavia? Okay, hello everybody. I'm Flavia. I'm from Portugal. I work with marketing, and I have a little trouble with putting all my screen throughout the experience in one sentence, one sentence, or one minute. That's my problem. Okay, so it's a little hard to figure out what to get in there in you know get it out get it quick all right so let's let's pull up her resume and let me tell you what i see in her resume and then i'm going to try to capture here what it is that i would like to what i would like to share with you here okay hang on give me one one second let me move this about all right okay hang on all right so i'm going to switch over switch settings how's this Oh, that's O'Neill. Hang on. Wait, you're going to see him next. We were we were doing the test runs. There we go. That's Flavia. Okay. All right. So uh, this is her resume that I absolutely, absolutely smiled on because it is a, um, it is just a, uh, uh, the format, format wise, I noticed it was it was just how I like it. So first thing I see when I come to the resume is I look at 
did she give me a one second test? And she did, she passed the one second test. So I know she's in marketing and she's telling me, I got 20 years, fantastic. I work in various industries, okay? SaaS sectors, not, okay, so it's got a lot. I'm looking at the whole core competencies. This is the next thing I look at. It has everything that I would imagine a marketing person does. And I can see that she's using current terminology like content marketing and all that good stuff. So she probably over her 20 years has evolved. This is assumptions. By the way, this is what's going through Andy's mind the first moments he sees a resume. So I'm guessing she has some evolution. Wonderful. She's got expansion of revenue by helping secure multiple clients, wonderful, optimizing productivity, agile, great, and here she goes. What is the number one thing a marketer does no matter who the marketer is or what their function is? It's to increase brand awareness. So we wanna get that somewhere in the intro. Then let's see, she's, okay, now Lyft Consulting. I don't know Lyft Consulting in Portugal. That's no big deal. What is it? She's telling me, oh, boom, agency, I got it. Digital strategist, team manager, PR. Okay, good evolution, wonderful. Been there 10 years, 10 years, I can see all that. She's showed me where she achieved whatever she achieved. Fantastic, so far, so good. Okay, I don't know Torque either. Doesn't matter because she told me it's a boutique marketing firm. Okay, so what I, what I know right now, then I look at the year, all right? Now, I know that from 2008, Till today, so that's what, 14 years she's been doing this. Then she tells me, oh, wait, hang on. I've got some other stuff that I've done. Okay, so then what I did, when she groups these like this, folks, in this section, when you do a grouping like this, here's what a recruiter does. Additional experience, what did she do? Because at this point, we're talking about something that's 15 years old or older, Okay, social media marketing, beautiful. Public relations, good. PR, PR, awesome. Okay, I get it. Wide breath, evolution, primarily the most, most relevant experience is through agencies, which also registers with me that she's probably handled multiple accounts. Okay, these are assumptions. Now, I don't, I don't know. This is the first time I'm seeing this resume. She's educated. That's great. Oh, look at this, social comms. Okay, so, okay, not only does she have marketing, but she also has the type of degree that completely is in alignment with what she's doing. She's got some certs. I don't know what those are, doesn't even matter. And then she is three languages, which is two more than Andy has. Okay, so Flavia, the only thing I could say is, good God, am I gonna interview you for the Mile Academy thing? <laughs> um, this is a really, really well-designed resume. All right, so now, in the interest of kind of piecing this together, how would I introduce you? I would say, shortest words possible, I'm a marketing executive. That's it, I get it, right? Okay, so I'm a marketing executive. Then, then what's your, what's your I'm gonna need my, my note cards here. Who helps, right? Companies, what's the number one thing a marketer does? Increase brand awareness, and she talked about growing the client base, zero to 15, I saw somewhere, right? So who helps companies increase their brand awareness and secure more customers using, what's their area of specialty? Digital strategy, digital strategy yeah. techniques. And I've spent how long? 14 years working for prominent marketing agencies two prominent agencies is even a better way to sell yourself because 14 years in two organizations mean you, you have longevity and what yep. and during that time i've helped now here's where you get a number in i don't know how many clients you've helped but let's just get, i'm going to make numbers up how many okay more than 20. more than 20. i've helped 20 of my clients companies raise their brand awareness on average by whatever 99 percent she can put whatever number she wants in there but to show there's there's lift no pun intended uh to, to to increasing brand awareness now she doesn't have to justify all that right now she's just introducing herself my primary specialty or my primary area of expertise is uh digital developing digital strategies and content Four, what do you do with it? I run, do you run, I saw somewhere in here you said Facebook and 
Facebook and blogs. Okay, running, what what do you do? So I increase brand awareness, then the technique I use is developing digital strategies and content and running what? Organic and paid ads, online social media ads, something like that. You can, you can put in if you wanna give them a flavor. Then you go to the, as you can see from my resume, I've also held various marketing positions such as social media marketer, public relations, whatever, and you just, just generalize it because now what you're doing is you're trying to show them the breadth, right? And as, as, right, so as you can see from my resume, I've held various positions. You kick those out. Uh, I also have, right, here's the last one. I also have a BA in social comms with a journalism concentration or whatever you want to say, a handful of relevant certifications. I also speak three languages. I'm assuming Spanish is your native tongue? No. No, no English? Okay, no, I speak I speak four languages, five, however many it is. I, you know, I speak multiple languages. Portuguese is my native tongue, but I also speak English, Spanish, and French fluently. And to cap it off, you would be a fool not to hire me. Right, kind of thing. All right, so wait, so hang on. So now, okay, now here's where I'm really worried about myself. I'm gonna try, okay, I got it in my head. I, I, I got what I wanna say. All right, now let's see. Let's see how long this takes. I know I'm gonna flub this one up. All right, hang on. I got the full view of the resume in my screen, folks. All right, you ready? Who thinks I'm gonna get it done? Go in the chat. <laughs> All right, I'm a, my name is Flavia. I'm a marketing executive who helps companies increase their brand awareness and secure more customers using digital strategy techniques. During that time, I've helped 20, uh, uh, 20 of my company's clients increase their brand awareness by 99%. My primary specialty is developing digital strategies and content and executing organic and paid advertising campaigns. As you can see from my resume, I've also worked in various marketing capacities, including social media marketer and public relations. And finally, I have a BA in, so in social communications and journalism, a handful of relevant certifications, and I also speak four languages. Portuguese is my native tongue, and I speak English, Spanish, and French fluently. 93 seconds. And that's and that's me on the fly. So you, okay, that's not too bad. All right, wait. So how does that, does that sound like you? Yes, very much. And what very would you change? What do you yes, want to change? I will not change? No, no, nothing. It's perfect. All right, so you could you could take that and you could actually put in like the real numbers, right? Because you could go, you could go through yes, this, yes. and you could actually put in the real numbers. And then here, wait, Flavi, here, wait, hang on. Let me get rid of the, let me get rid of the timer. So over here, okay, wait. So, so let's just let's just kind of recap this before we bring O'Neill up. I love all this uh, feedback on the resume. You can pull up some num. You're a marketer. You can pull up some numbers to the top. Okay, oh. so you can add them up there. This all looks great, and I I love it. This the core competencies. It's what I expect. Okay, good good highlights. Uh, all this other stuff is is great. You you really really did a great job, uh, kind of following the protocols of the of the workshop. Just really nice job here. I love I love all of this. You don't but just so you know, you don't need to if you don't want. You don't have to bold all this other stuff over here. It's not a not a big deal. And everything else looks great. I guess before we send you off with a huge thank you, any any other questions? No, no, no. It's your tip. That's why you like it. But that's perfect. And I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Oh, you're so welcome. Can we all give her a huge, huge hand? That was fantastic. Uh, Flavia, thank, thank you, you so, so much. I um, I really, I really appreciate, uh, I really <laughs> appreciate that. Thank you so much. All right. How did you guys, you know, how did you, how did you like that? Was that, that pretty, wait, could you imagine if I had like days with that? So, so that's pretty good. Now, now that the team, 
the team did a nice job picking the raw material here, and Flavia's great, and that is a really, really good job uh, from uh, from her. Very, very sweet. All right, hang on. I got. Let me move a few other things around. I uh, I got another guy for you. Let's see. Hang on, O'Neal. There you go. Okay. O'Neal, can you come and uh, you want to come join us? Yes. Hi, Andy. How you nice doing? To see you. Nice Good to see you, see you again. You. <laughs> <laughs> hey, give us, a, give us a minute or two on you, man. Just say hello. Introduce yourself. Where are you from? Generally, okay. what do you do? Hi, everybody. I am O'Neal Alvarado. I am originally from Venezuela. I am a corporate attorney who has worked more than 13 years in public uh, multinational companies supporting... Okay, wait, wait, don't give it all away. Don't give it all away. Okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so wait. So we, well, I know you live in Panama City. So Correct. what's your... Um, okay, wait, so they know you're a lawyer. I know you're a lawyer. They know you're a lawyer. And I got your resume up and I'm loving your format too. Uh, what's your kind of your biggest struggle? I think that the biggest struggle is when the interviewer asks you to go through the, uh, your experience in details and not to be so long. Okay. I, I think, I mean, try to brief that. This okay. Is no, no, wait, that, that's really good. Cause who would agree with him? Show of hands here, right? Thumbs up on that. Who would agree with him? Cause I, every one of the, probably one of the most common questions I get, just like what you said is how long should it be? Right. And so we've kind of established that you could get a lot in, in one minute, not, uh, you know, or, or sorry, you know, 57 seconds or whatever it took me, not 93 seconds, like I saw in the timer. Uh, but, but that's a, O'Neill, that's a, that's a great issue that a yeah. lot of people have. And I would think a lot of, a lot of folks, Maria Gabriela Rodriguez Mancada. I love that name. She's clapping. Flavia's in there. Oh, that's so great. You guys are fantastic. All right. So I'm let's... also, Andy, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. And also, uh, when the interviewer asks you about, tell me about yourself, sometimes they want you to go through your experience or to be brief and try to interpret and to understand what they want. So one of the things you can do, now that we've established, because we kind of went through with Flavia, you can say, All okay, right. you know what? Let me give you a minute on me and, um, and, and then... And then you know you can you can help me dig deeper in the areas that you find uh, most helpful. I'll give you just some kind of some highlights and a summary about me. And then you go in and let's let's now take a look at at, at your resume. And let me make sure as I'm going to swap the camera and I'm going to have to swap Flavia out and change it. Okay, Flavia, I will see you later. We're pulling in O'Neill here in my little camera there. Okay, there you go. We good there? All right, he's looking good. I've got O'Neill's resume up. He also goes to the Andy Lassavy School of Resume, right? Which is why I love this resume. All right, so first thing, senior executive attorney. Okay, so now, now that right there, I know he's a lawyer, but I don't know what he does yet, but I'm sure it won't be far behind. 20 years, I can see it, legal and compliance. Okay, in-house, thank you. All right, so I need to know if he's corporate counsel. He is. Big companies, he has. Pharma, uh, consumer goods, apparel, retail, let's call it, uh, built and managed, global manufacturing, lead compliance departments. Okay, so he runs the department, many facilities, 2,000, I looked at the number here, right? I look for a number, I should say, contracts. All right, so he's negotiated or manages a lot of contracts. That makes sense. And he must have seen just about every compliance requirement known to man. All right, so in the core competency section, same kind of thing. He pulls out, okay, eth the, these are the big ones, ethics, data, privacy, environment, M&A, and all that other stuff. And he, like Flavia, is also multilingual. Okay, so now I'm looking at the highlights. Eliminated legal exposure. So I'm assuming this means that you either help them comply. You can clarify this for me, by the way, O'Neill. You either right. clarified or, or, or avoided uh, litigation by doing something that put or the organization into compliance. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Right. Let, and go with me just on my layman's understanding sure. here because you can obviously tailor this. All right. Generated some budget savings. I love it. 
by reducing the num number of resources in general. And then the other thing that I'm looking for is this. Okay, so anytime I see a compliance lawyer or somebody who's focusing on that, I'm gonna wanna know what did you, how did you actually reduce the, the risks and what percentage did you take off the board? So he gives me a number. Now, I'll, I'll use that, I would use that in your introduction. I'll use it in some form, you can clean it up you know, when, when you use it. All right, so now I wanna look at his companies. Canopy, Growth, obviously I don't know who they are. It's a Canadian organization. It's pharma, awesome, it's big, okay, great. Gildan Activewear, all right, like he said, apparel. Colgate Palmolive, okay, he works for some really big boy and big girl companies here. And, okay, something that's new to me, I didn't know he has media expertise. Okay, so, so that's great. Media and entertainment or entertainment or whatever it is, great. Uh, he's educated, I'm sure he's got a law degree of some kind. And here's something that I'm noticing that was recent. So that's something I might wanna pull out in an intro, especially if, it's a, if it enhances compliance because in here he's only gonna get so much compliance law and then in practice he'll have expertise, but it's nice to know that he can call somebody's attention to additional uh, specialization certifications, whatever that, whatever that it is in that in that realm okay so if i had to uh if i had to look at his background and try to piece together the things that i would want to say i would say instead of executive attorney i would probably introduce myself as a legal and compliance attorney because that is what your bread and butter is i love that you've worked for large organizations so who helps what are you what are you helping you're helping large organizations stay compliant right and of wait i want to keep them compliant i want to avoid litigation and i want you to work in because these are such large organizations and they're global you want to talk about that that i do this on an international level and a regional level so what that does is that gives you heft that says okay he's he's global right that's that's big and then you can say something like i've either i've done that for various industries or i've spent you know, I, you know, I've spent my, what, entire career or my 30 years or however it is, um, you know, working for blue chip organizations in whatever kind of industries, right? Pharmaceuticals, consumer products, and entertainment. I would probably pull that in there as well, even if it's, and if you don't need it, you could just say, you know, across four industries or something like that. And then, then I would hit your highlights. So during that time, I've helped what those companies, those big blue chip companies, right? Avoid 30 million in legal exposure and reduced, you know, 90% of all the compliance risks. Or you can aggregate it because you're still it's one to a hundred, right? Or something of that nature. And then what I would say is I would call their attention to the specialty. My specialty is, or my primary focus is, or my primary of expertise is. Uh, helping companies with their, what, you get a lot of contracts, so contract management, and anything related to compliance, whether it's. So because you do everything under the sun related to compliance, everything related to compliance, whether it's whatever the biggies are, ethics, data, privacy, M&A, or whatever you, whatever you, and then I would, you could cherry pick to make sure that you call their attention to the areas that they have the most issues with. If they were looking to hire you and they said, hey, our biggest issue is M&As and we're growing, um, you, you know, we're growing through M&As, we need somebody who really understands this, you can call their attention to that. And then what I would say is, then here's where I would wrap the grouping for you is big international companies. So as you, as you can see from my resume, I generally help organization, large organizations or international organizations so emphasize. So I'm comfortable with large scale issues that come along with compliance for these sized companies. So you reiterate. And then your other thing is you can talk about much like Flavia did, but you could head down and say, and as you can see from my resume, because you already called their attention to the, what, the companies that were on your resume. As you can see from my resume, I recently attained a specialization in compliance from George Washington last year. And I also speak multiple, if that's a, you know, if, if, if you're in your hometown, that's probably not a big issue. 
Um, but if if you're not, if you're going, you know, to somebody who's outside of, uh, or if you're going to an organization outside of of your of your homeland, you might want to throw it in. How's right. that sound? Does that sound like you? It sounds very should we, good. Then. Should we try to do the timer? Should we try to see how long that takes me? Yes. <laughs> Want to do the timer? Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's see if I can. Um, here we go. How, how do I do here? All right. Hang on. Give me the loop back. All right. So, see if I can remember all that. As long as I have my crutches. Okay. Uh, I'm a senior legal and compliance attorney who helps large organizations stay compliant and avoid litigation related to international and regional corporation or corporate regulations. I've spent my entire career working for blue chip companies across a few industries, including pharmaceuticals, consumer products, retail, and entertainment. And during that time, uh, the couple of big things that I've done is I've helped those companies avoid $30 million in legal exposure, as well as ensuring uh, that I reduce their compliance risk by 90%. My specialty is helping companies in their in, um, developing and managing their contracts, as well as anything related to compliance, uh, such as mergers and acquisition, tax, ethics, data, and privacy. As you can see from my resume, I generally help large global organizations, so I'm comfortable with the, with the compliance issues that go along with that. And I recently attained my specialization in compliance from George Washington University. Something like that. How, over, how much over a minute was I? I think that it was like five seconds. Okay, so not too many. All right, so that's, that's not bad. That's not bad. Let's try to get this. <laughs> so how, how do you feel about that? Does that sound like you? Yes, it sounds like me. It, sounds it does. Like any me. questions, any tweaks, any, anything uh, so, you... So, yeah, I, I just only want to share something that usually when I finish okay. that, I try to ask the interviewer, okay, do you want me to go deeper in a detailed animation? Mm. It's something okay. I usually... Do. Okay. Um, also, I think that it's very important to know very well the job description because at the end of the day, you want to emphasize what are your skills that are related mm -hmm. or relate to their problems mm -hmm. and to the job function. I think that is something crucial for, uh, I mean, very important in any interview at this point. Following Wait, your, 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 I mean, your team. Yeah. Wait, that's that's really hold on. Don't don't skate over what he just said there. So I gave you a construct, right? I gave him a construct. I gave you all a construct. But you would be taking putting in and taking out the components of your background that most closely align to what that organization needs. Right. So so what I gave you there, O'Neill, right, you could you could take, you know, because all those things that are related to compliance, you could cherry pick those. You can cherry pick your emphasis and understanding and what you highlight as far as the industries, you know, or mm -hmm. the functions within the industries that, you know. And so all of this is malleable, depending on, again, where you're going, not not. It, it is about who you are, but it, but what supersedes who you are is where you're going and the who you're going to be for them, if that makes sense. Right. Really right. great job, buddy. I really I really appreciate you. I really do. Thanks for being such a great member. Thanks to in you. The, uh, uh, come on, stop it. All right, I'm going to let you go. I know you're a busy man. Go, 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 go get that meeting in order. All right, let me, let me get, back. Let me get uh, back to me. I'll let you go. Thanks a million. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Bye bye. All everybody. right, you're, you're welcome. All right, and let's give Flavia and uh, and, uh, and and, and O'Neill uh, a huge shout out. I'm gonna let you both go, and you know, and and O'Neill, if you if you got time and you want to come to the boot camp session after your meeting, please do. And Flavia, I will see you there. Okay. All right. Take care. Thanks a million. Appreciate you guys. Okay. All right. So, folks. Uh, you know, that should give you a, let me, hang on one second, let me get, let me get this, let me get this reset for me, give me a second here, that should output my display, let me get that muted, hang on, whoop, and let's make sure, okay, all right, we're all good, give me a, give me a sound, I got more windows and buttons and other, you, you know, you know I thought I was going to hit the wrong key or something, all right, so I, um, 
I hope that helps. And what we're gonna do, what we're gonna do now, all right, so if if you're watching this, if we've clipped this out on a recording, uh, I just wanna re I wanna recap for those, and then we're gonna go to the QA for those here. Okay, so again, I'm a whatever your verb noun combo is. Who helps? Whatever you do, the people, the companies, the communities, who helps, and then whatever they do. I've been doing that for forever because I'm, a, I'm an old gray-haired guy. Uh, so what for how long in context? During that time, I've, what's the impact you made? Try to get some high-level number or something in there to give you context, to give you, to give you heft, to give them context about your, your grandness. Uh, my primary specialty is pick the one that matters the most. For, as, as you can see from my resume, I, and then I also do what? Have what? Have attained what? Other things that are germane. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. I really do. If you are still watching this and it's on a record, can you hit the thumbs up button, please? And it really would help to send YouTube a signal that you enjoyed this if you got value out of it. And if you're watching this on a recording, maybe later today or at some future point, Check out the next one, which is coming tomorrow on selecting the right stories. Uh, otherwise, I'll see if you're you're watching this on the recording. If you're here with me, we're going to the, we're going to the Q and A. Great to have you. Okay. Let's see. I hope you guys enjoyed that. That is a legit view into you know what what we've been doing in uh, in my job search boot camp. Last three months, we did resume hot seats. We did intro hot seats. We're going to do some more intro hot seats. All I'm going to say about that program right now is as of June 13th, so I don't know when you're watching this, but as of June 13th, that, that package that I'm offering is $997, but if you want to get in today, it's $497. We're doing one last big uh, deal special, so to speak, and if you get in today, you can join us this afternoon as well as tomorrow afternoon or, or tomorrow afternoon and Thursday afternoon for the private group coaching sessions for our June our, our June coaching uh, for those for those members. If you have any questions about the program, if you have any questions about the, the program uh, should be pinned. Uh, let me just mention to my team, pin uh, pin the job search uh, program. And and you can check you can check that out uh, if you um, if you're interested check out the page and jump in if you're not sure email support at milewalk.com and I'm and we're happy to to help you uh, if you do have any questions about the program I'm happy to answer them uh, during the Q and A portion which we're going to spend a while doing right now and uh, before we go into uh, before we go into the other stuff all right Kara can you help me uh, with with uh, any questions related to the introducing yourself, especially from the boot campers. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, all right, let me see. I'll just take the ones you gave me here. David Gerton, are there any questions I should ask the hiring manager before my interview with him tomorrow? Uh, he reached out to me and was impressed with my profile. Have a great day. You yes, you are in my leadership coaching program. Uh, so I would say, when you are uh, dealing directly with the hiring official, number one, I have a video on YouTube about my top five questions I would ask in an interview. I would go watch that. Number two, that book right there. He's, here's some other resources before I get into some specifics. If you buy that book package, which is $7, I'll send you that $30 hardbound. You can have the eight or nine, $9 ebook. You'll get the audiobook that you can't get anywhere else. And I also throw in a, a $27 ebook called How to Interview the Employer, 75 Great Questions to Ask Before You Take Any Job. I break down in the 75 questions what you should ask the boss. So if for seven bucks, you can have a whole list of those if you want. That's the fastest route. But I would be greatly interested in what success looks like, what 
what are their biggest challenge? What is the boss's biggest challenge right now as a team and as an organization? What would success look like in helping you achieve that? And the individual who you're going to hire, what will success look like a year from now? What will that person have done? What will that person have accomplished? And remember, the skills that they're looking for are a lagging factor of the success factors. Folks, you get that? So if you don't need to, t like, I love asking the question about what kind of skills and traits does a successful person have in this position or in your on your team or in your company. That's great. But if you ask the success question, that the success question is the ultimate money question because you work backwards because it will be inherent what traits and what skills that person is going to need to pull off the goals that constitute success. So that's something that I would be leading with. So David, that's how I would look at that. And those are a few other assets I would check out. That's a great question. Uh, can you, Adam Stark, can you touch on introducing uh, yourself in the boss hunt message, what components aside from your experience should be in there? Adam, the boss hunting message is contained as it is. That's how I would introduce myself. Just use the template. Because if, if I'm going to change the template I gave you, I'm going to write an entirely custom uh, template based on strength of relationship and other things that I don't know how to answer that. So just take the template and use it if it's cold. Bradley Stone had really good first and second interviews, sent thanks. They said they would get back to me by the end of last week for a final interview, no reservations, how long to wait, how to reboot. So if you had, you said you had really good first two interviews and sent thanks. Now, you said they said they would get back to you by the end of last week, except that I don't know if you interviewed on Thursday or Monday. So. All of that depends on Bradley Stone, you have access to the Job Interview Mastery Program. And in the Job Interview Mastery Program, in the fourth session, I talk to you about everything you need to do after the interview in order to know how to follow up appropriately and how to, how to get your expectations managed about how long they're going to take, what they're going to do, say, what they're going to do next, who's going to contact you, and so on. So every time you get out of an interview, you want three things. And I'm giving you the baseline because I'm going to have to give you an if-then answer. You want to know who's going to contact me, what the next step is, who's going to contact me, and by when. Okay, now, let's say you actually know all that. Well, if you said to me, my interviews were on Monday, and they said they were going to get back to me. I asked them and they said, Andy, they said, the recruiter's going to, the next step is I'm going to go to the third round. Awesome. The recruiter's going to get back to me. Awesome. And they're going to get back to me by the end of the week. Okay. What I would say to you is, okay, it's Tuesday, right? So that means they're one day late. They're two days late. Now, if it was Thursday and they said, we're going to get back to you by the end of the week, I would wait a whole week. If it was Monday the week before or Friday the week before, I would wait till the middle of this week to get back to them. And so, so the, the amount of time that, that they have exceeded their deadline in relation to the amount of time they were taking in the first place. So as an example, if it was Thursday and they said, I'm going to get back to you tomorrow and they don't, then, then what I would do is I would probably give them a day or two grace, and then I would reach out, you know, reach out to them. It's only Tuesday, so I might, I might be a little more patient. If it was a, a week in advance, and they said we're going to get to you in a week, then I would probably give them three days. If, if it was something like it was well ago, meaning multiple weeks, which I didn't, I didn't get from your message. If it was multiple weeks ago, and they said they were going to get back to you by Friday, I would have also like to know were they interviewing other candidates? Were there other variables in play? Because if they say if I, I interviewed you two weeks ago and I say, hey Bradley, we should know something by Friday, uh, you know, June third, uh, or whenever that was. Uh, but I want you to know I've got four other candidates that I'm interviewing over the next couple of weeks. I'd probably give them a whole week because anything could have went wrong. They, priorities might have changed. 
Somebody might have gotten called out of town. Somebody might not have been able to meet their interview date. They had to kick it into this week. Those kind of things. When you, what you didn't ask me is when you didn't, when you get back, or maybe it's the how to reboot. Just say, uh, hey, I wanted to check in. I uh, I, I realize, um, you know, we were hoping to connect. Don't don't say you said you were going to get back. I know we were hoping to connect the end of last week. I thought I would check in, reiterate my interest in the position. Uh, if you can you let me know if you know anything if you don't know anything can you at least give me an indication of by when you might have some news on the next steps or something like that and that's how I would go about it and the last thing I want to say here is I am not big on following up I'm really not so some of you might be saying well Andy doesn't that show I'm interested no don't I understand that you think it shows you're eager but I want you in a in a mode where you don't care if they get back to you, right? Feed the funnel concept. You are constantly sending messages out and you have so many what? Bidas, balls in the air, that if one company you're interviewing with is moving a little slower than you want or lets you go midway through the process, you don't care because you've got a lot of other good traction, right? If you put all your stock into into one uh, organization, and you're squeezing it, uh, you know, you're white knuckling it with them. That's not a good place to be. So I would try to, I would try to balance that. All right, Jamor, big heart here. I gave my daughter your book, Interview Intervention, and she used your answers in an interview. In the end, she did great in the interview, got the job, and got a pay raise of thirty k. Pick up the book. That is such a great plug. Thank you. My daughter is a recent college graduate. Uh, She has referred all of her friends to Andy's YouTube page and has recommended the book. I totally, totally love that. I totally love that. You would do me a favor and give your daughter a big hug for me and and tell her thank you. Uh, Number one, I'm so glad that you shared that with me. And number two, thank her for referring me to her friends and her and her colleagues. I that is the highest highest compliment. It really is. I love it. Okay, question here. Right, I like this. Jamor, can I mention in the intro that I'm changing careers? You can, you should. Remember, this is an intro. You're doing it live. So I'm I'm Andy. I'm taking my experience as an executive who's managed large groups, who's hired a lot of people across different functions, and I'm seeking recruiter positions. I'm using my whatever. I built units. I've hired a, what a bunch of people. Like I would peel out of my background. What's germane that supports my ability to match what they need, but also you have to hit the intersection of why you're qualified because you're changing careers. So I, you got to get some of that in the intro. That is a great one for career changers. Adrian Radcliffe, if you're transitioning, what's your how long? Highlight the relevant skills of the whole career or just recent ones. Great question. So what I might say is when I was transitioning when I was 38 or 39 or whatever it was and I and I opened up a recruitment firm, but if I could have interviewed, I had actually thought about interviewing for a recruitment position. I would have said, I've spent my entire career in consulting, working for, ver- you know, supporting various companies, understanding the kinds of people that they need to support those functions. I, I want to recruit for the kind of positions that I know or whatever so you you pull whatever is germane and however you could make it sound remember what am i always going to say what markets you best and that's how i would do that and then jay buck same thing how do i adapt when i'm transitioning careers i think you guys those are great great questions how are we doing on time just so you guys know we're we're going to 12 15 because then i gotta take a little break and get my doggies out and do my stuff and I just want to make sure, remember, 500 off. Don't wait until June 13th because you're going to miss all the coaching. And uh, I'll go into some more details about what's in the program. But I want you to know, 
It's, uh, it's, it's really effective. There's over 10,000 people who've gone through it. We've got all kinds of success stories, which you probably saw in a message that I even sent out this morning. And people posting their, their victories and the share your wins uh, space in our community. Good stuff. Michael Tierney, it seems these intros work better if you've had jobs at multiple orgs or consultancies than for someone that's been at the same place for many years. Not at all. As you can see from my background, I've spent several years working at, during that time, I've held various positions through the ranks. I've, right, I've had many accomplishments. I've spent 20 years at this company, but I've worked in three different areas. In those areas, I... Right, you package it however you need. Those just happen to be those people, right? And Ashley, Michael Tierney, if you're in, if you're you're a boot camper, and I think you might have submitted your resume, and I what we're gonna like peel off in the boot camp session the ones that people submitted for the hot seats for the public session. I figured I would just go through those. Maybe we'll maybe we'll get a chance to kind of go through yours. Echo. Lyris, I lose all confidence when I introduce myself. I feel as though they see me as unprofessional, trying to work on myself to gain that confidence for the career I truly want. I would encourage you to um, really decompose your background in relation to what it is they need. On Thursday, it is a do not miss. I am doing a case study of how to break down a JD. And it, it, it will go so far in helping you understand how to intro yourself, how to story tell, how to cherry pick, and how to, how to consolidate what you wanna say by picking the right story or stories. I'm gonna teach you a technique that I've never taught publicly as well uh, that is pretty cool where you Frankenstein and fracture a story together to make it sound like one cohesive unit. I mean, it's it's really good stuff. Please don't miss, well, don't miss any of the stuff, but especially don't miss that. Because when you go through these exercises, Echo, when you go through these exercises and you have the desk time to go through this and do this, your stories will sound sensational once you work them. And then you talk them out out loud and then you kind of listen to yourself, maybe Zoom record yourself and, the, or, and then get the, you know, kind of get the transcript or whatever and look at, what you're saying, what's necessary, what's superfluous, what else could I stuff in without augmenting the time? That's good stuff. Great question though. Grace seven, what if you have zero presentation skills and prefer to give short direct answers? That intro is a bunch of short sentences, a bunch of short sentences strung together. That's all that is. That's how to think of it. Break it down. C Z arms, C Z arms, V Q. Uh, do you recommend saying the same thing on the one minute video or audio recording on the application? Home run question. Just take what I gave you and make that your one minute speech. Never thought that was the usage for that, but I love I love that you can. Stefan Mao, boot camper you are. When can I use this intro outside the interview? You want to meet somebody that, you know, networking, informational interview, you can do these kind of things. But for you, I've given you an even better whole script, booklet, and everything. Folks, by the way, I got, you know, like, if you really are liking this stuff, the boot campers get a whole booklet like this of all that intro stuff and about a whole bunch of other million other things. So check, check that out. Bonnie Albert, love your approach. I'm still listening even though I got the job. Where do you sell your Andy is Awesome mugs? All you got to do is go to the coffee shop. So if you go to the Mile Walk Academy, uh, if you go to the Mile Walk Academy, there's a thing up there that says mug shop, and, uh, and, and you can grab some there. Jeff A., my boot camper, would you add why you want to work at the company to the intro? No. No. That'll come out. That'll come out in in the discussion and i i think you know there's no need to do that don't take up that time with that uh let's see andrew summers once we land a new job and begin marketing ourselves within the company through meet and greets do you approach the those self-promotion meetings differently than job interviews yes andrew summers drew my man 
you go through the first 90 day session that I gave you access to as a bonus, as a boot camper, and you are a leader. So you have the whole career accelerator program too. It's about them. Who are you? What do you do? How do I make your life easier? Kind of thing. Start with that. And then you can introduce yourself in pieces as to how you can support that. I'm Drew. I work in whatever. I'd love to know what you do, how we fit, what I can do to help you make your life easier, not make your life more difficult, and all that other stuff. Jay Chung, uh, Flory, should she mention the gap of EMP from, oh, you're talking about Flavia. Should she mention the gap of EMP from 2020 to 2022 in the intro? Uh, let, me, let me, hold on. No, oh, I wouldn't. I mean, she could if she wanted to. Uh, I, you know, since 2020, I've been. But she, she could put that she's a freelancer, anything she wants there. Sue, Andy, great session. Love your, oh, thank you. Love your shirt. For the most crisp resumes you see that present most relevant info covering 20 plus years, what word count range do you typically see? Thanks, Sue. I never think about word count. It isn't. It isn't necessarily about word count. And don't let anybody tell you. Oh well, studies have shown that if you have a word count of, you know, uh, 350 words or less, don't pay any attention to that. What markets you best? Somebody is going to have a shorter word count that has a shorter experience level. But I would. Pro I don't even think about that. I think about quantity or sorry, quality of what goes on those two pages. Uh, Holly W, I am testing audit how to best quantify my achievement. Your testing and auditing is about um, the, 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 the flow through rate of bugs. So, you know, I, I've historically managed teams whose, you know, quality assurance testing, unit testing or whatever has a accuracy rate of or, you know, large scale, whatever, with bugs of a low number or something of that of that nature. You could also talk about if you've built uh, systems to manage the testing, you know, and been able to help expedite or accelerate the rate of testing and bug detection. You could do something like that. Uh, Echo Lears, where, who can I ask how to explain a transition? So we talked a little bit about that. Clint Razor, my re resume reads like an anthology of loosely related short stories. I now have a career focus and direction. How do I take a bunch of dead ends and package them as a positive? I have learned through my uh, various organizations the common thread of what I do best and how I can add the most value, which is why I'm now or recently, or five years ago switched, or whatever, too. That's how you do that. All right, listen, uh, I got to wrap this up. Loved this session today. I hope you did, too. If you enjoyed it, smash the like button and share this. We're back tomorrow, 11 o'clock, with the boot campers, with the boot campers. We're on at 12.30 today. We're on at 12.30 tomorrow, and we're on at 1 o'clock on Thursday. Thursday sessions a little longer, so or Thursday public sessions a little longer, so uh, so I hope you really consider joining. It is the la it's the last time we're ever selling this package. It's the inter it's the interactive package where I offer all the online support and live group coaching in addition to the full package, which has every imaginable step tool template and everything you would need to find your dream job and get paid what you're, uh, what you're worth and what you deserve. And then one last thing here, uh, I made the resume changes as we spoke about at the last live and I got an interview within four days of applying. I love that, Foreman. Congrats to you. All right, all y'all, boot campers, I'm taking a quick break here. I'll see you in 15 minutes on the Zoom. And big shout out again to Flavia and, uh, and, and, and O'Neill for sharing themselves with us. And I'll be doing some more hot seating here uh, with the boot campers, and then we'll be doing some Q&A. So we'll be on for about an hour from 1230 to 130 with you all. Okay, 
All y'all, I'll see you soon. You guys be good. I'll see you tomorrow.